Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Summit America. This is our very last day. We have but one best of five left. The Sneaky Knicks Assassins versus the North American Rejects. The loser goes home empty-handed, and the winner secures a spot with evil geniuses here in the land finals, right here in this studio in sunny Los Angeles. I'm Zayori. I'll be solo in the studio, but joined remotely by PPD. Peter, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? I'm excited for these games. My NA brethren, Let's see how they do. Yeah, I we we figured you would be excited to cast uh, some of the other NA teams, and well, you guys had some fun games earlier in Dream League as well. So before we hop into the draft for Game One, what's your prediction coming into this series? Who do you think is going to take it? Mm, even though the Sneaky Knicks Assassins won the last time they matched up 2-1, I actually really do think that North American Rejects on their best game are better than Sneaky Knicks Assassins on their best game. Mm -hmm. So I think they should win. But that being said, NA Dota is pretty volatile. So who actually knows? I just want to see some good games. Yeah, uh, it's hard to guess as well. I didn't look at the bets, but I reckon it's it's pretty darn close and not, uh, not a series I'd want to put my rares on. But... Let's go ahead and hop right into the draft here and see what we have before us. So, all right, the North American Rejects, they start off with a first pick Wisp, and the Sneaky Knicks Assassins, they get Lycan, and they'll have him on Dire side as well. Yeah, um, Dire Lycan's definitely something to be afraid of. Uh, they probably have a plan for it, but Wisp is one of Fog's best heroes, and I actually think uh, 1437 plays it as well, so they have a lot of um, options. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, See what they try and match it with. Um, a lot of teams like to do Wisp Tiny against a Lycan, because Tiny just out carries. Yeah, it's true. We've seen it. And Tiny was actually first banned out here by the Nyx Assassins alongside the Marana. Oh, wow, I didn't see that. Yeah, and the Rejects ban out uh, Bat Rider as well as Invoker. So Tiny's moving on up, man. We've seen some pretty scary Tiny carry games, even without the Wisp. Just Tiny with his branch carrying against the world. Yeah, he's... Uh... He's pretty good. Um, I'm not a total, I'm not a full believer in the tiny without the wisp yet, but maybe maybe it is good. We actually haven't tried it yet, so. I mean, it's definitely not as good as it is with wisp, but it can work if he's allotted enough farm and. Yeah, yeah it's... I, I want to see the the blink dagger tiny. Just... Yeah, maybe some some solo mid tiny. Is that is that still possible? People the, tell me it is, but the sing the sing sing tiny. Yeah, has he done no, that I, in I competitive? Uh, yeah, he's, I mean, we played a match against him once he tried it, it didn't work, but <laughs> it, uh, it's definitely scary, as a, especially as, like, a support player, like, just some blink tiny, just flying out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, that gets, gets rough pretty quick. Now, the Darkseer will be the second pick for the Sneaky Nyx Assassins, another offlaner that we've seen a lot of recently. IX Mike has been playing a lot of Clockwork this tournament, a fair bit of Bat Rider, but he's also been playing a little bit of Darkseer. He's played, he's played a lot of heroes, actually. I've seen him on Elder Titan, I've seen him on... Some on Zeus the other day. Yep. That was an interesting game. That was an um, interesting game. Saw him on um, Lone Druid even. And, you know, he's uh, really expanded his hero pool. Yep. Um, that's just a part of their work ethic. They practice like every day, all day. So they're probably trying a bunch of stuff. And I'm sure Fluff is a master theory crafter. So, yeah. We'll see what they do. Yeah, I think he won, not yesterday, but the day before against NAR with Darkseer. So. Yeah. It's yeah, pretty good. He's been playing pretty well, and also Tree has been kind of picked up hit or miss here, and not a hard counter to the Tree, but a little bit of a deterrent to cut through some of that living armor. Regardless, the North American Rejects don't go the Tree route, and they'll pick up Keeper of the Light, so some of that Coddle EO. Both supports locked down with their first two picks. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's uh, interesting what they pair it with. You know, normally when you see Keeper, IO, a lot of teams, like back in the day, they went Chaos Knight, mm -hmm. um, you know, Phantom Lancer. Um, yeah, I think Tiny Ursa are probably the two scariest right now, and they're both banned out. Who who would you say is the next next best choice for uh, pairing with the Wisp? Oh man, I mean you can pair anything with a Wisp. Like uh, you could even do like something normal, like a you, I mean you could do like a Luna, you know, like something you just took a standard carry. Morphling would be pretty good this game, um, but I'm not. Sure. I think they might want to try and use the the Caudal in conjunction with the Wisp. And the tether target, so mm -hmm. maybe like a, a storm spirit could be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Storm uh, wisp is something I've I've seen fanatic do it of of all teams, probably just well, small. Yeah, sample, when you but... um, chakra the wisp and it get and you're tethered to the storm, he gets double the mana. So he gets like you know he just he's got unlimited mana almost. Yeah, it just goes crazy. That's pretty absurd. Well, 
It's interesting seeing Keeper of the Light now as well, because uh, more often we see a lot of farm getting allocated to Keeper of the Light, and almost like a position 3 Keeper of the Light, where they keep farming up these Ag Scepters and getting that daytime vision, all those big cooldowns off available permanently. Be curious to see what they pair. The Sneaky Nyx Assassins will live up to their name and grab a Nyx Assassin with their third pick. And hmm, I guess that means either a mid or a support Nyx Assassin here. Yeah, Nyx is pretty good. Um, a pretty good pick, I think. It's good against the Darkseer, so they kind of take it away from NAR for that. I know Brax likes to play it as an offlaner. And it's also very good against Caudle and Wisp, because uh, especially the Caudle, who's always often just like solo eliminating lanes, keeping them pushed. You can kind of just mm -hmm. blow them up. And yeah. the Carapace is always good for counter initiation against the um, Relocate. Yeah, that's true. And it's actually not that bad against the Caudle. If it gets scattered out or all, or he's not hiding in the trees. And you see well, it coming, you can get off the carapace. Yeah, yeah, you can carapace them, and then you can, you know, get the follow up stun if you, if you have enough points in the uh, carapace. So yeah. Let's Good stuff. Shut them down. And the rejects will grab Clockwork with their third pick, probably their off lane hero, and pretty good against Lycan. Anything that traps him in and stops him from using that max move speed, Dark Seer as well. You can't really surge away from Cogs. So a pretty solid pick here, and there you go. The Nyx Assassins with a fourth pick, Chen. Lots of healing coming out this game. Yeah, and that's good. Um, one of NAR's signature heroes for Fog is the Ancient Apparition, but they already have both their support heroes, so they know that's not going to be there. So maybe a heal strat, like heal push strat, will kind of work. Mm -hmm. uh, generally against Wisp, if you're having a hard time, you want to group up as five and just make sure relocate ganks don't really uh, work. Yeah. So maybe we'll see some early pushes from SNA here. Yeah, they certainly have a mm -hmm. fair bit of pushing power with the Wolves and the Chen creeps, as well as Roche Control, which... Tends to make pushing a little bit easier if you have an Aegis and or Cheese. And there's the Morphling. So that will be the carry for the North American Rejects. One that you mentioned out, uh, or mentioned could be particularly scary here. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it, you know, like, you know, like, you know, everyone says before, Morphling does have a pretty slow um, coming together time. Like, it takes a while to get online. Mm -hmm. So if they can hit a timing before that, before, like, maybe before Ethereal Blade or something, maybe they can... Uh, you know, kind of cheese it, cheese their way into a victory this first game. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. Morphling, he's he's slow to get going. Some well, I used to say Lincoln's his core on Morphling, but we see more and more people skipping it and either going straight for a BKB or even some games just going straight for the E Blade. But well, I know NAR, especially Korok, likes to get a Midas on him, so maybe we'll see that. But um, you know, some games like the Lincoln's is really good, but other games you just need a BKB, and that's yeah. you know, it's either you go Lincoln's or you go BKB for the most part. So, yeah. uh, a lot of people pick like to pick like silences like um, Skywrath, uh, Disruptor, and I mean, Ancient Apparition is also very good too. So, a BKB on Morphling, like as soon as possible, is almost required. Ten seconds yeah. Uh, Doom, the final ban for the Nick, uh, Sneaky Nyx Assassins. We'll see what the rejects ban out here. They may end up doing dual lanes and put the EO Morphling mid, and the Clockwork off lane, then pair something with the Coddle. Or they could just do a safe lane, try lane around the Morphling and grab a, a solo mid laner here. They do have a couple of options. Yeah, I think they're gonna do I think they're gonna try and do the um NAR is gonna try and do the dual the dual lanes, dual lane mid, dual lane off lane with Coddle plus Clock. Oh, okay. Or they might try and get something else and I think I definitely think Coddle is gonna be in the off lane with plus one. Maybe not Clockwork, but Okay. That's interesting. I'm not exactly sure what Snaking's gonna play here. Um yeah. the one hero that I have that's not banned that I've seen him on is Luna, but I'm not sure if it really works into the lineup this game. Especially if he wants to go as coveted Mask of Madness, lose game builds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they might be able to get away with it. It's just really greedy, and the Nyx Assassins have quite a bit of push that could pressure them, and I think if they go to Luna, it'll be really hard for them to contest the early Roshans coming out from Lycan. I think they need something with a little more mid-game presence that can at least... Got the, uh, at least they have... Um... The Clockwork Rocket to scout the Roshan, which yes. is really, really important. You yes. need to have some sort of um, the way to see inside the pit. Yeah, A lot of times people have Potem or something, for example, you shoot an arrow. Yep, TA works well also with the traps. TA is, TA is the best by far, definitely. And Death Prophet, the final pick for the Nyx Assassins. So their roster, pretty straightforward here. Lots of pushing power now with that exorcism. And I yeah, think... and they got, a, they got a good silence too for the Morph one. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Silences work very well against Morph. But I think a good last pick here for the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. I don't know that the Rejects can get away with that Morphling, though. That, or, pardon me, that Luna that we were talking about, though. No. 
I mean, the one thing I'm worried about is whether or not this lichen is going to be able to farm. I think I think they have to put lichen mid and do just death profit in the safe lane because I don't think lichen lichen Nyx assassin is going to do very well against the caudal plus one, <laughs> yeah, especially if it's true. clockwork. Yeah, little melee heavy here, and with Chen in the jungle, that does make their lanes a little weaker. Rejects will grab Puck for their final choice, so a nice mid-game tempo controller, and that will actually be the Korok hero. So Snake King will be the one taking point on the Morphling here. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think Puck safe lane on for Korok against the Darkseer, mm -hmm. and then uh, dual lane off lane with Clock Caudal, and then Morphling with Smith. But I mean, right. that's what I that's what I would do. I think so. Yeah. I think that makes sense. We'll see exactly how they set it up. They do have some couple of options, and that unpredictability does, well, might work in their favor. And the yeah, Nyx Assassins, be... hmm. They just need to get farming the Lycan, like you were mentioning, but where are they going to put the Death Prophet? I guess it's ideal for them if she's matched up against the Puck, but that's a gamble putting her in the off lane and hoping that it's a safe lane Puck. Oh, yeah, off lane Death Prophet. I actually lost that the other day in matchmaking. Really? So it's legit, yeah, huh? I don't know. My support hero is just, you know, jerking it in the forest. So <laughs> I just a solo against Death Prophet offlane. Yeah, we lost very quickly. Yeah. Well, rough that's... game. Rough game. <laughs> I had to play an offlane Luna the yesterday. Uh, the other the other day that was pretty similar. Doesn't sound too bad. You have nice movement speed. You can run really fast. Yeah, it was it was still rough against a safe lane try though. Uh, yeah, I, I could see some problems. Anyways. <laughs> Um, looks like they're doing the Dark Sarah offlane, so yeah. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, let's do some player introductions here. On the Radiant side, we've got the North American Rejects, and of course this is game one of this best of five series, so potentially a long day of Dota ahead of us. This is a pretty close matchup, and I would be surprised if it's a 3-0, because I do not know who would take this 3-0. Really hard to guess. Brax yeah, definitely. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, no. Oh, yeah. Bra Brax will be on the clockwork here. It looks like Korok will be taking point on the puck, and now he is rotating down to the safe lane. One, four, three, seven. The Fool will be on the Keeper of the Light, and that puts Snake King on the Morphling, and Fogged will be tethered up to his buddy. He's playing on the Wisp, and it does look like the dual lane mid, puck safe lane, and I think you called it right, Peter. I think it'll be clockwork and Coddle headed up top, unless Coddle spends some time in the jungle. I'm not sure where the Coddle's headed. Um, did you did you not introduce SNA already? Or? I I did not. I'll do it. Go for it. All right, we have uh, Fluff and stuff playing the Chen and the Safe Lane or Safe Lane Jungle, and uh, we have Whitebeard on the Nyx Assassin, support Nyx Assassin, mind you. Um, then we have Ush on the Lycan and the Safe Lane SNA on the Death Prophet mid with two pool tangos, and then uh, IX Mike the Stash on the Off Lane Darks here. Yeah, the stash, rocking the hero with the big beard and the big stash as well. How appropriate. Already, 1437 finds an invisibility rune, moves into the trees, and ready to start channeling some illuminates here. Snock could be in a little bit of early pressure. Ponies hit. It's 150 damage out of the gate, but they won't be able to follow up onto a kill. Still decent harassment. And with limited uh, regeneration here, Snock already forced to eat one of those pooled tangos. That was a pretty ambitious mid gank. I don't know what they were planning to do there without Morphling having any uh, waveform. But... Yeah. Sure, I don't. He didn't have too much better things to do. So, yeah, looks like he will rotate to the top after all as he heads up to join the clockwork. Try and zone out this lichen a little bit, and then Ash, Ash will have his work cut out for him. Not much Brax can do to zone him out solo, but Coddle can certainly do some damage already. Look at that! The cogs come out, illuminate hits, and will this be the first blood? Actually, I yeah, think it, it might. Battery assault, plenty of damage. Brax secures that bonus gold as Ash takes an early spill. Mm, yeah, this is going to be tough, man. I mean, Lycan is very good at recovering, but I mean, whoop, I, mean I think Clock is going to feed off these heroes. Yeah. Especially when he's almost level 3 already. Yeah, he gets stunned inside tower range, but plenty of creeps nearby. And like you were mentioning, there's not much the Nyx Assassin can do to really zone out a Keeper of the Light Clockwork. Yeah, he can harass the Clockwork a little bit as he comes in to poke Lycan, but Illuminate is the trump card up here. It'll do most of the damage. Fluff in the jungle nearby grabs himself a Hellbear. Might be able to slow down the Keeper of the Light a little bit, but this is one of the weaknesses of Chen's, it, or of Chen in general. It makes your lanes rather rigid, and now Fluff may be in some trouble. Brax coming in, holding on to his mana for now. Now they won't go for the kill. Now in comes the Hellbear. Cogs come out, pushes him back. Nicely done by Brax. Still gets stunned. Illuminate flies, just barely clips Fluff. Lots of trading back and forth here in the top lane, but no one really too close to a kill. This is not a good laning phase for SNA. They need to dissolve the laning phase as soon as possible. And that's going to come with this Chen trying to set up some ganks. 
Yep. They might. Oh gosh. Fluff just taking so much damage here. The stun coming onto Clockwork. They get the turnaround. Fluff survives with double digits of hit points to spare. The Howl coming in handy as they level it out one to one. Yeah, that was really that was really good. It's really important that they got that kill. This this Clockwork is going to have their way or have his way with them in this lane. So big kill, big plays. Big plays indeed. And now he's coming straight back in. Grabs Whitebeard in the cogs. The Fool channeling up the Illuminate. And Whitebeard, he sends it back with the Spike Carapace. Now Brax in trouble once again. He's on the run. Has Battery Assault on. It'll expire here in just a second. And he might be okay. Wolves will not chase him down. They'll just about face. And everyone just goes back to farming. Okay. They're surviving. Let's see how the other lanes are doing. Yep. Snake King in the mid, he's 14-2, and two, so doing pretty well. Death Prophet holding her own quite well in a 2v1 lane, 12-4. and four. So seems to be pretty even there. Down bottom, IX Mike playing very aggressive, cutting the lane, soaking up all that XP and getting all those last hits as well. 13-15-0 against the 15-6 uh, and six Puck, so mid and bottom are, are pretty darn even, but that's a minor victory for Snog given that it is a 2v1 in the mid. Do you notice all these... Um like um, compendium animations like people are like purple glowing and stuff actually i haven't like watch when s and uses his bottle you see are you looking at that oh did you see it let's see here uh, his bottle's empty now but oh, it has like um, it has it has like you know the normal like blue kind of like surrounding glow but then it also has like a purple glow on it too oh that's cool it might be like because he leveled up his compendium or something oh that's sweet yeah i just bought my compendium this morning and i haven't haven't done much with it yet but it's pretty cool who are you gonna put as your favorite player I don't know. Well, is favorite just... Wh what does that mean? Is that like favorite to win or just favorite like he's really cool? Hey, your favorite player, man. Who's your just, favorite? Just who's my favorite? I was thinking about putting No Tail, but now that you're putting me on the spot, I feel like I should have put PPD. Who's your favorite uh, no. player? Oh, I put S4. S4? That's a good choice. It's, it's very inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> I like No Tail. He makes me laugh. And he makes big plays. Mm -hmm. uh, Stun on top on Brax. Yep. Uh, will they have the damage to follow up, though? There's another Illuminate coming out, doing a lot of damage. Oh, the body block from Whitebeard. Oh, no. But the Impale is off the mark. I think that would have been enough for a kill had it connected. That definitely would have been a kill. But Clockwork walks away. Ooh, the misplays. It happens. You know, the Carapace stun at level 1 is only 0.6, so he's just got to be... He'll, he'll, he'll get the next one for sure. Yeah. He, he knows. He learned. <laughs> and now coming in once again, perhaps looking for a stun on 1437. Fake pumping it a little bit. And we'll throw it. This time it connects. Now Chen coming in. He's got a dark troll here. They've got they've got the damage to bring him down. Chen will test his faith. And he does not pass the test. Whitebeard, he gets knocked onto the sides and he comes back up, gets finished off. That makes it a one for one. Clockwork will finish off the Nyx, and Chen gets the kill on the keeper of the light. These kills are so bad for NAR. I don't think I really don't think they should be dying. Like they need to realize what they're doing in this lane and what their objective is. Their objective is to slow down Lycan's farm and you know get levels on their heroes. But they're playing so aggressive that they're actually giving away kills. Which is you know this Chen is always in lane, but because they're getting these kills, it's actually worth it for him to stay here. Yeah, that's very true. And Ix Mike down bottom. He's still cutting the lane. Positioning himself very aggressively. Now hitting level 7. Hasn't put a point in wall quite yet. Normally this is a lot more difficult for the hero that has to last hit under the tower. But Korok is doing a damn good job here. He's 28-9 and he's really not lacking in the farm. Now a rotation comes down from Brax. I asked Mike, out of mana, will use that soul ring. Song. Song. Ooh, close call. <laughs> They're going to try and do the coil and then the clock just walks up to him. Yeah. But I asked Mike, just superior game sense. Yep. If he had been trapped in the cogs there, they probably could have gotten a kill out of it, but rather unfortunate. Death Prophet actually has the same amount of CS as Morphling mid. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is good. Um, oh. Waveform? No, she's got phase boots, man. She's cruising. They do have stacks, though, for snaking or caudal to clear, though. The Wisp has been doing the Okay, that's the something. Stacks. Not zoning out the Death Prophet, but it looks like they've got a triple stack here at the hard camp. And... What's he got here? A triple stack as well. Two centaurs and some alpha wolves. Uh-oh. In the mid. Bogged. He tethers forward. Actually takes a crypt swarm right away. Taking some right clicks down. They'll have Ooh. enough for the kill. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate. Snake King. Not enough mana for the waveform. If so, would have had enough to finish off Sna, but just I think that would have killed him short. if he would have thrown that last swarm. I yeah. don't think he realized how low Snake King's health was. It's yeah. so, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell against the Morphling because it's always like morphing, you know, here and there. 
Right. Yeah, he but will... Snake King actually 200 HP, so he could have got the swarm to kill him. Yeah, and Snake King does go hand Midas first here, so following the footsteps of Korok, he'll go hard farming, and why not? It's a pretty quiet game, and they'll just try to outgreed this Lycan. And he already moved over to that big camp and grabbed one of those big creeps there. So now he'll start to come online a little bit. What level is the Wisp? Fogged. Halfway through level 5, so relocates will become a reality before too long in this match as well. Even though Nyx had a pretty bad start with the Lycan getting first blooded, they actually recovered really, really, really well. And I think they're in a really good position to take the game. Like, all three of their cores are at 40 CS at 8 minutes, so... Wow. Nyx Assassin returns that Illuminate. Now 1437 in big trouble. Chen looking to wrap around. Brax throws cogs, but they don't cut it off enough. The Faith gets Oi. tested, and the Wild Wing Ripper pecks him down. Now Brax on the run. If Nyx can connect with the stun here, they may be able to secure a kill. There's the mana burn. In comes Snot from the mid lane. Oh, he's got a haste rune as well. Exorcism popped. It'll be a oh, double no. kill, or will it? Oh, wow. Brax with 25 hit points. He don't walks away. Snake. Don't do it, dude. Put out, put out, put out. Uh oh, Snot. Whoa. What an overcommitment. Dives to tier 2 and then tries to TP out in tower range. That's yeah, not he happening. Got, he, got, he saw the coil come from Puck and he tried to port out, but uh, pretty, uh, like, I don't know. He got really, really good um, magic stick usage by Brax. Yeah. You expect plays like that, but it was still really good. Well, it ends up being a, a lot better for NAR than I thought it was going to be just a... I, I thought it would be a 2 for nil and then an easy tier 1 tower kill with the Exorcism, but instead Death Prophet falls, that makes it a 1 for 1, and their tower is still standing. Now down bottom, they rotate onto IX Mike. He gets caught inside of the cogs. Brax with the battery assault on. Puck coming in, drops the hammer, even a relocate from Fog and Snake King. And it is actually the um, Wisp that gets credit for the kill. So they get a little bit of extra experience and they'll just head back to the mid lane. Tower's are nice as well. Yeah. Puck will be able to grab it right here. Very nice. SNA is going to want this tower goal to uh, propel them into a mid game victory. But. Every deny tower will count. It'll be a big deal, I think. Yeah, Snot holding on to a very small golden experience lead. Wow, that hook shot off the money in the mid. Probably could have secured something onto Sna, but just falls a bit short there. Yeah. Um, Chen is now level 7, so he has... He can get four creeps, and he has his ult. So we'll see if uh, NAR can react Yeah, Fluff is found. Really good farm here. Arcane Boots, Ring of Basilius already up. It is pretty fun. Well, it was the kills. He's 2 0 2. Yeah. It's good to go. Yeah, absolutely. And, ooh, Snot taking some damage in the mid. Those wisp balls smacking him in the face. But, alright, Illuminate channeling up top. Whitebeard. Will he get off the. Nope. No carapace that time. Yeah, no land ward anymore. Oh, they do have a land ward. But I think it was out of range of the Caudal, maybe. Caudal was, like, too far out. Yep. Medallion picked up on Lycan, so maybe, maybe it's rush on time. Yeah, he's already got his Vlads as well. He's had a pretty good start. He's number two on net worth, second only to that of the Morphling. So a nice Roche pick me up right about now. Sounds pretty darn good. They need something to combat this Hand of Midas that Snake King picked up straight away. They will mm -hmm. press forward, chip at this tier one tower mid. But in comes Chen and <laughs> easy Hand of Midas creep right there. And everyone will just back out. No skirmish breaks out. Lycan's headed towards Roshan. He's getting smoked there now, I think. Yep, there you go. Fluff smokes him up, moves in with the wolves. That rocket scout, though. They're going to probably shoot another one here. They're like, where's Lycan? Got to be Roshan. Radiant vision. Will they actually see him? No, the rocket expires just as Ush walks in. He'll shoot another, I think. Yep. But will it be too late? Chen creeps in there to help him out. How fast can Ush finish this off? Got the medallion up now, taking it down pretty quickly. And waveform forward in the mid lane, but... Snod jukes it. Shoot your rocket, Brax. Come on, man. Yeah, looking at Radiant there is. There is, there is. Okay, he throws the rocket now. The question is, will they be, even be able to force a contest, even though they know he's in there? They have relocate if they want to full YOLO, but I think they just give it up. Yeah, in comes support from the Sneaky Nyx Assassin. Sna has an ultimate available. No point in silence yet, but that means he's got some extra spirits with that witchcraft. Roshan falls, Lycan picks up the Aegis, and it is completely uncontested. So that gives him a nice little gold pick-me-up. And they may try and just translate this into a tower push. Exorcism popped, and they will just truck right on forward. They need to be careful they don't waste too much time on these pushes. Um, yeah. Actually, no, it looks like oh, they want to fight. Oh, Hook, not good. Hookshot in, connects on the creeps, but he gets ensnared. He gets stunned straight away. Brax oh, on the retreat. And 
Uh oh, Exorcism's expired. There's the Dream Coil on two. The all heal from Chen, but Whitebeard is the first to go down. Fluff taking heavy damage as well. Puck haunts or jaunts into tower range, secures the kill. That's a two for nil. Snake King actually gets both of them. Silence comes out. They're on the run. Korok thinking about turning around, but no, they will just turn tail and run. It's a two for nil for the North American rejects, and they keep their tier one tower alive. I'm not exactly sure what um I don't think a tier one tower push is what they need to do. Like Lycan was just doing ancients and Mike was farming top. If they had like the Dark Seer mech there, I think in the wall, it would have been totally different. Yeah. And that was pretty big for Snake King. He actually got both of those kills, so now he's starting to come online. Power treads, Aquila to go with that hand of Midas, and eleven hundred gold. I think he's gonna rush Ethereal Blade right yeah. now. It's not bad. Like it's He's far enough he's, ahead. He's gotta be careful he doesn't it. He's got to be careful he doesn't get uh, nuked down by the um, Nyx Assassin, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of these games where what's better, Lincolns or BKB? Both of them have their weaknesses. The BKB is nice against some of the stuns, but you've still got your Death Prophet ulti and the Lycan that'll cut right through it. Yeah, that's true. I, I think Athblade is the way to go, so you can... Uh, I mean, you just got to defend a couple towers, and then, you know, I mean, you'll be fine. Uh -huh, but no, he's going to go for the BKB. He's picked up the Ogre Club now. Okay. That's. I mean, that's... Probably a good choice as well. It's a safer choice, perhaps, but yeah, definitely. E blade. Well, he may it's a one core lineup, so yeah. If he, if he goes ethereal blade and he dies and he gets under level, like game's over, he just yeah. loses. That's true. Up top, Lycan secures the tower deny. Nicely done. His morphling is chopping away at it. Down bottom, Brax and Ix Mike maybe looking to tango. Brax trying to line up the hook shot. Not sure that he can solo down this Dark Seer even if he grabs him here. Hook shot in. There's the cogs out. And battery is solved. There's the relocate forward. Now they'll have the damage. Mike may have a mech, but that won't be enough to save him. Wall of Replica comes out and he actually gets a counter kill with the Morphling Illusion. So it is a one for one. Nicely done by Mike. Yeah, so that wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Yeah. Another top for a tower push as well. Yeah, out, out comes the Exorcism. The Silence onto Snake King. Tower taking pretty heavy damage. Uh, yeah, very heavy damage. No glyph available. The tower will fall. No way the regest can contest this one. And Snake King and Fogged will be forced to retreat. But they if might they... be able to grab a tower of their own in the mid. Oh, yeah, that's a really good trade then for them. They're going to try and force tier 2, but Korok has this blink now. Yep. Okay, they need to be careful. This tier 2 will go down pretty quickly. Whitebeard actually takes a lot of damage, but they still just can't contest this. Illuminate coming in. Might clear up some of the creeps. No, nope, comes a little bit too late. So it's a tier 1 tower in mid in exchange for the tier 1 and tier 2 in the top lane. Not ideal for the rejects, but at least they find something out of it. Okay, Fluff had the headdress, so I thought he was going for the pipe, but he actually went back for the um, the, the wizard staff or whatever it's called. So yeah. he's actually going for staff, which I think was a very good decision against the clockwork. Mm -hmm. um, generally, for staff isn't the greatest against a hero like Puck. Because if you leave the coil, you get stunned. But it's very, very good against Clockwork. So I think it warrants the decision here. Yeah, and you'll have to deal with Cogs a bit more often than you have to do, uh, deal with the Dream Coil. Slightly different cooldown timers there. Ix <laughs> Mike down bottom. Speaking of cooldown timers, hook shot over. Putt coming forward. There's your Silence as well as your Orb. They even burned the Dream Coil for this as the Cogs expire. Mike just can't do enough damage to grab a counter kill this time. Wall of, of uh, Replica just coming up now. And Mech not enough to save him. But in comes the support. Whitebeard, Vendetta up, looking for Brax, connects with the backstab, there's your Impale, Mana Burn, Crypt Swarm, maybe they can bring him down for a counter kill, yeah they sure can, one last auto attack from the bug, we'll finish him off. Ix Mike man, you gotta clean it up, can't be happening. <laughs> it's oh. twice now, it's just get picked alone, I mean, they didn't even relocate there, if he relocated it was an easy kill. Yeah, that's true, and oh, here's a pause from Sna. yeah, good old, uh, good old Ix Mike, I have to say the other day, uh, yesterday during the the game three, Mason's BTS keep your interns in uh, under control. That was one of the best comebacks I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, obviously that game was out of control. So it was a little out of control, but we that's laughed. Dota, hard. That's Dota, dude. You never know. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Dota something something box of chocolates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the nine tentacle surprise. I mean, he's a real character, isn't he? He was, he was, he was acting in character. Like if that was Mason. If it was standard Mason. That you'd never see anything like that. But the tentacle surprise. <laughs> I mean, he has no leash. Oh, I'm sure that's a sure that's a real treat. The name makes me laugh every time. But he's so, he's so quiet and nice on Skype, though. Like he's. I mean, Is he really? He has like that big like internet ego, but you know, in Skype and like personally, he's just like 
a really nice guy and he's super quiet and yeah a apparently we asked fogged and the boop after korok's name is because he likes to uh cast their games and every time they get a kill he says boop so yeah that's something that's something um like him and grand grant and bleak and who else who else is in that crew the korok easy peasy crew <laughs> they've uh they've, they've been saying boop and beep and bop and brax brax yeah brax as well so they've been yeah. doing it they've been doing that forever boink moo and boink moo and oh and a dota the whole gang the whole, the whole gang is here so we'll resume tier one tower in the mid will fall for the north american rejects they were trying to pressure the top tier two but ush comes to the tower's defense Illuminate comes to the mid lane, but it won't be enough to save the tower. So, recap of the tower count. Two still standing outside of the base for the rejects. And on the dire side, they have only two down. So, it is a two tower advantage for the dire. That gives them about a 3,000 gold lead. But experience actually going the way of the rejects. And at least some of that is because of the Hand of Midas in the inventory of uh, old Snake King there. Yeah, not only the Hand of Midas, but they've been grouping up to get the tower kills, which I think is probably the best way to play it. They're going to hit a timing here where they're going to be about, you know, 5 to 6k experience behind, but they're going to have more gold, and that's when they're going to need to end the game with the Necro 3 on Lycan. Mm -hmm. They got uh, one four staff on Darkseer, they're getting a second on Chen. Oh, initiation bottom. Oh, yeah, hook shot forward from Brax, right onto IX Mike. This is and really sloppy, really sloppy. Yeah, sure is. Doesn't have cogs this time. Gets mana burned, vacuumed into the wall. That'll be enough for the kill. Now Snog coming in with the exorcism online. Will secure the kill onto Fogged. Snaking on the run. Illuminate actually doing a lot of damage here. Brings a lot of them low. Korok comes in. We'll finish off the Nyx Assassin. Jaunts back. Snog still pressing forward. Out comes the Dream Coil. That'll stop him dead in his tracks. They may be looking for a turnaround here. They'll have to do it quick. Waveform forward. Snaking taking heavy damage. They secure that kill. Snaking survives. Now Mike on the run. He will surge away. Blink forward from Korok, he has the damage, waning Rift Orb, and that will be a successful team fight for the Rejects, but a 2 for 3, pretty sloppy. Pretty sure the only question you have to ask here is why is Lycan not boarding? I don't understand at all. Like, he could have turned, he could have killed them all. Yep. He's got a level 2 Necro book, it's still sitting in that safety deposit box back home. So maybe feeling uh, not quite up to snuff with that huge investment, still not in the inventory, but... Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe they thought that they could rat down the uh, top tier three instead. I mean, I'm pretty sure his Aegis just expired while he was pushing top. So, like, why would you not port bottom and, you know, at least just burn your Aegis or something? Yeah. I don't know. They definitely yeah. could have used him there. Positives for SNA. They almost have a blink on Nyx, which is going to be really big since they currently have no initiation. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very important. You can get a good uh, impale, and then Darkseer can follow up off that. Yep. That's very true. And Chen, how close is he to his four staff here? Oh, just hang on to that staff of wizardry. Actually, hasn't found too much farm. There's your blink though, and there's also your level three necro book on the lycanthrope. He hasn't revealed it yet either, so the rejects may get a little surprised in this next push when they see level three necro units coming, coming out, knocking on their towers. Yeah, I, th I think they know it was coming, but I think snaking uh, is probably just gonna. One thing cool about morphling is that you can actually waveform the necro units and if you kill them while you, with your waveform you don't take any damage because oh, you're man. vulnerable during your waveform yeah that's handy uh, he also has a bkb so you could just kill him that way but <laughs> yeah it's, it's something those necro units they, they know what's coming though it's like they, they understand i'm pretty sure they understand what this game is going to be about yeah i mean it, it's not the the sneakiest of plays here given that they have a pretty heavy pushing lineup but now if he like bought like a shadow blade then that would be pretty sneaky. That would be sneaky, yeah. The definition come of out. sneaky. Yeah, come out of nowhere. Shadow Blade like it. <laughs> Just uh -oh. blow up Caudal or something. Speaking of sneaky, they may bump right into this Lycan. Snake King coming up to the high ground. He's got a tether buddy with him. Wolves will scout it out. They know he's around. But I don't think die. they can lock him down here. No, definitely not. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Korok? Think no. about it. Whitebeard wants to show off this blank dagger. So I think this timing push is going to come out after the second Aegis. Yeah, they're going to take their they're going to take their free Roche on. And oh then they're my gosh! Go. There's a new Roche clock. What is this madness? Yeah, you How thought the, 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 the other other one was easy. How the hell do you read this thing? I just got used to the old one. What the hell? Okay, so there's it's a big it's a big clock. Yeah. And then, um, the six minutes, which is like the bottom, the big, the shiny bright light bottom. Yeah. See it? That's when the Aegis expires. Okay. And then, um, eight to then, uh, the eight. It's like a normal clock, so eight to eleven. Okay. Is um. Oops. Yeah, I I, I see what you're saying. Okay, so, so no, it's gonna spawn at ten minutes, I think, around ten minutes. 
Actually, yeah. I don't know. A little bit know. past. It's just about a minute from spawning. I see. That, that little light is is how it works. I, I yeah, got yeah. It. The, the highlighted region will be the 8 so, to But isn't it a maximum of 11 minutes? And this is a 12 o'clock clock. So is that one minute between 11 and 12 just never used? You know, I haven't seen it before, so I can't say for sure. Or, but or did they up the timing and now it's... No, no, it's not. It's, it's They didn't change that. It's just a... I think that's just for the idea of having an actual clock there instead of some random circling stuff. Hmm. Okay, well that's cool. I, I like that. I like this better than the clock starting at 3 o'clock and counting around. That was abysmal. I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that thing. Someone in creative was like, this is it. Everyone was like, yeah. That's this it. is the future. 3 is the new 12. <laughs> no, I, let's, <laughs> let's change time. I'm a, I'm a clock purist. I like my clock starting at 12, thanks. But like, and he'll camp out the Roche Pit. They know it's coming up soon at any time, and he'll be right on the money here in just about a second. Just waiting for Roshan. He's like, oh no, Ash, it's, it's coming up right now, dude. Come on. All right, I'll just, no. I'll, just, I'll just type it in all chat. It's fine. Oh no, he leaves right as Rosh comes up. That's just unfortunate for us. He'll probably check it after these ancients, but a little bit of a bummer. Massive Ooh, lag spikes. Okay. Who's, who's that benefit? Who needs less lag to play? I would say SNA just right, right clicks the tower and wins the game during giant lag spike. Yep, I, I agree. The pushing strat a little easier. Illuminate, waveform. Puck, those those aren't your friends when you're lagging hard. Smoking the Roshan. Yep. Even Wisp, he's no fun when you're lagging either. And these Chen Creeps make it a lot easier as well. You get that little armor aura, get yourself a little bit of extra health regen. Big Wolfie here will just bring it down. But the Radiant, they've got some vision. Was, a, was that a rocket that was shot in there? Well, rocket shoots in now, but again... Oh, up top, we'll see a fight break out while Roche is going on. Vacuum in from IX Mike. BKB popped by Snake King. He'll just try and chop him down. Snot TP's in. He's got a double damage rune on. Fogged. Gets Yuled by the DP, and yep, he'll be in Damn. big trouble. Snake King on the run. Doing work, doing work. Mm, can they lock him down here? There's the Impale. It connects. He's morphing that strength. Where's the silence from DP? Won't throw it out. And like, oh shit, guys, Puck's coming. Run. run survive. Hasted Puck at that. But space created. Roche falls and Aegis goes the way of old Lycanthrope. This game's about to get real. Hells yeah. This is it. NA Dota style. This is this is your time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so BKB on Death Prophet, that's a game ending item. Like when you buy a BKB like that, you say, Hey, it's time to win the game. Uphill. Let's go. Let's do this, boys. Uh well things will get a little more difficult for him here. Keeper of the light. 1437, how does Steven find this farm? A 24 minute hand, or a hand, I was gonna say hand of might, is Ag Scepter on the Coddle. It's impressive. Yeah, it is pretty impressive. It's very good against Lycan, because you can keep spam the blinding line. But Coddle is a hero that farms very quickly. Like you can see, he has 101 CS, so any yes. lane his cores aren't taking, he's just gonna eliminate farm that, and he can stack his own jungle, clear that. True. Yeah, he farms well, but it's it's still. Impressive to see a quote-unquote support here getting such an early ag. Well, compare his farm to Clockworks. Clockwork doesn't farm anything. Yeah, so that's true. 33 CS on it's, Clockwork. It's, it's, a, it's a trade off. A clock doesn't need that much farm, but I'm not sure how effective a Coddle Ags is going to be here because the, the spam relocate, which is probably the best part about it, is not going to be that effective, I think. Yeah, you can do some fun stuff with, like, Wisp. If he has to relocate in a sticky situation, you can recall him right when he tries to... or right when he gets relocated back, but... Yeah, we'll see. The heal is nice in the daytime, but, of course, they can push during the daytime. Up top, Fog gets caught by the Vendetted Whitebeard. That'll be enough to secure the kill. Ooh. Down bottom. Oh, wow. Another fight breaking out. Ush pops the ultimate. They go straight on to the Keeper of the Light. Blinding Light comes. There's a two-man coil coming from the puck. Ush actually taking a lot of damage here. In comes Mike, throws out the wall of Replica. Keeper of the Light falls. They proc the Aegis on the Lycan. In comes the Exorcism now on the Death Prophet. Looking for a kill on Korok. And they'll settle for a kill on the Nyx Assassin instead. Snake King on the run. Morphing that strength. He'll be okay. Brax comes in. Isolate Sna and the Death Prophet falls. It's a two for two. Exchange favoring the Rejects, though. They'll trade their two supports and get two cores of the Sneaky Nyx Assassin. And they get the Aegis. Yeah, also got the Aegis. Pretty mm. nice. Yeah, that was really good for SNA. They didn't have the they didn't have fluff there with the mech or four staff or anything, so mm -hmm. You mean good for the rejects? Yeah, really good for the rejects, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Fluff? Do they have no, they don't even have a mech. Does Fluff have it coming on the courier? No, that's a oh, I'm sorry, Darkster is a mech. 
Oh yeah, Dark's here. But the four staff would have been useful, I think. Radiance middle tower yeah. is under attack. And no. Brax will get a tower kill. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower. Not bad, not bad. They're knocking down the towers pretty well for the team that doesn't have the pushing advantage here. Yeah, they're in the process of missing their timing, so I think the new timing is BKB Lycan. Maybe. Yeah. He's not Maybe. too far away. Basically, he just went, needs he himself went bots. That was that was not a good idea. I don't think. That rat they, Dota. He wants to this, split push, man. This bots idea makes me think they just want to go ultra late game, which maybe maybe they can get away with. They have good heals and for the F blade nuke, so. Yeah, they've got they do have pretty decent heals between the Chen and the Mech, but let's see. Let's look at some hit points here. Chen with 850 hit points. Yeah, right. Yeah, Nyx yeah, still in the triple digits. At least two heroes are easy kills. The... It's just about saving the Death Prophet and the like and letting them get their damage out. And yeah. in order to do that, Asha's going to need a, a BKB. Yeah. Because the, bl the Blinding Light is too good against him and all his like, Necro units. Yeah. His little buddies. And it is a double stack here on the Dire side that the Sneaky Nyx Assassins will take out. Get a small little gold pick-me-up there. Scant will glance at the gold graph here, and things are surprisingly even. Gold... Barely in favor of the Sneaky Nyx Assassins, and North American Rejects, they have a very small experience edge, just about a thousand. So yeah, I'm surprised that the experience lead isn't greater for NAR, it seems like, but they've actually they've been like taking the fights instead of just split pushing. Yeah. So, it's interesting. And Korak did pick up uh, Shiva's Guard now, after his Dyer's Blink Dagger. There is a gem out on the Keeper of the Light. Mech on Clockwork, and Snake King, he has now completed his E-Blade. They'll finish off this top tier 2 tower. And that levels out the tower count. Now four dead apiece. BKB up on the Death Prophet. We may see a skirmish break out. The Nyx Assassins rotating in, looking to make a defense, but I'm not so sure the Rejects will actually commit to a push here. No, they'll just back out. All right, BKB Lycan, Aegis Cheese, go, go. All right, that's the new timing. If they can't do um, it there, then... I'm setting up a new timing. All right. Let's see if I can read this Roche timer here. It will be a quick Roche respawn. So that's that's good news for the dire team. No, 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 no. I you know I don't think it shows the last three minutes until you reach the eight minute mark. Oh, oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, okay, I thought the, it was just like the, the first big dot, possible. A, okay. First big dot, A just disappears. Second big dot, you get the three minute timer. Okay, I see. It, there's still Action that top. protection. Fog is going down, I think. Yep, he's in trouble. He gets vendetted. He gets impaled, and he gets destroyed. Fluff and stuff taste tests his faith, and well, it's just not so good. Poor Nick's Fall, he keeps like, getting picked off. Even though Nyx was really, like, really bad in lane, he's actually really good in like the grand scheme of the game. Uh, the only BKB here was Morphling, so the Carapace is just going to annihilate the rest of the heroes if they get hit by it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, 2.4 second stun is nothing to, uh, nothing to shrug off. Yeah, definitely not. Oh, that golden Roshan, that's cute. Sneaky Nyx Assassin's rocking the Immortal Courier here. I like that. Not from like one of the. Yeah. Oh, like... I think it's from Dire Tide or Frostivist or something. I don't know. No, but it's like a... oh yeah, Dire Tide. Yeah, Dire. It Tide. looks like it's got like a tournament item thing on its own or something. Yeah. First what... blood. Maybe what... they were the first ones. One of those super expensive couriers. Yeah, oh. I don't know. I'm Damn. not on that cosmetic game. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Merlini makes fun of me on a daily basis for it. I'm notorious for not knowing anything about the couriers. I'm getting better though. I know Cluckles and Arnabus, and <laughs> that's about it. It's, uh, the, it's the the TI three one. It's the little ugly gremlin thing. Yeah. Oh, the Greville. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Greville, Greville. That's yeah. One. Rocking the the naked Greville still. What about the what about the you know about the EG throw right? Oh yeah, yeah. We learned all about that yesterday. That was we actually read the lore during the game during game uh -huh. three. EG throw. Well, what is it? Have you figured it out? The EG throw. Yeah. Is there is there lore for the courier? There is a little blurb. It's something like it rumored it was uh, powered by demons and fear, and there are all sorts of little, oh, gotcha, gotcha, little uh, nuances there. It's pretty cheeky. I, I hadn't moused. I've seen that courier, but I hadn't moused over it and actually looked at its name. I was like, oh wow, that's that's good. I like this. It, it's pretty nice. I used to have the little um, snow, like the little snow penguin or snow penguin or whatever. I oh think that's what yeah, it's called. yeah. But the you know the. Upper forces made me change. Oh, what a bummer. For good reason, though. Sell out, boys. <laughs> Lots of gold here on Korok as well as Snake King. Um, 
Korok had about 5,000. He just picked up something. I think it was an ultimate orb. And he'll be working on that Scythe of Ice before too long here. Yep, sure was. Snake King, who knows what's coming next. 5,000 Gs up on him, though. Butterfly's pretty good. Yep. Manta's pretty good. Yeah, Manta is pretty common. That movement speed helps you farm a little bit. Fuck it, get a Scotty. Yeah. And it will help deal with that Death Prophet silence. That's nice. Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying we got what? Uh oh. It's a wisp. Oh, it's just a replicate. And comes That's the, the best when a bat rider lasses the replicate and you're just like, all right, guys, let's fight. <laughs> let's do this, boys. It's hard to tell sometimes. They're so tanky. Yeah, it's true. The, the replicates are, are not your, your average illusion. I like the, the farming relocate. That's good. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff. You got to be careful about where you're um, where you're at, though. Like, they're running at it right now, but I don't think they're going to get there in time. Ooh, brats. Oh, the relo yeah, the, the relo or the recall. Yeah. Got them out. Forgot about that. So the Roche timer, it will be a, a regularly timed Roche. Not pretty long, not the longest possible. Like it's two, pretty, it's pretty long. A little over long. two minutes, right? Like 2.15. Yeah, I guess you call that halfway. Okay. Yeah, I guess it is a longer one. It's it's longer than average. Yeah. Know. It's it's a skill according, set, guys. Learning to read the Roche timers. Takes according practice. To math. According to math. <laughs> Jesus. See, oh, someone got a DD. Do they just... Yeah, 45 DD. seconds. So this is the timing. Sna, they're grouped up around the pit. They know it's coming. And, well, look at you with the calls, PPD. It will be a Scotty coming out on old Snake King. I think that was the worst of the three items that I recommended. <laughs> yeah. But definitely an option. <laughs> well, he'll tank yeah, up a little it, bit. Did you see Whitebeard is blink? Did you see that? No, I didn't. You gotta, you gotta get this stuff, man. You gotta. You got, what did he do? It, no, it's got like the, it turns purple, like the, the smoke that when he oh. blinks away. It turns oh, purple. oh, okay. All right, I'll try and look for it here. I'll, just, up, up my smoke game. If you see anything purple, just be like. <laughs> Ooh, Whoa. Chen. Adios. Yep, that would that would be a shotgun from old Morphling there. Uh, that's a kind of a bad time for Chen to die. Roche coming up here in just a couple seconds. That's just a Chen, man. Forget him. Hey, man, the all heal's big in these team fights. You gotta play the mind games. Okay, so, oh, look at the bots. <laughs> so, the, okay, your Chen dies, they think, all right, they're not gonna Roche. Chen's dead. A little do they know. Osh has little sneaky wolves in the pit and BOTs. Clock rocket, though. Uh oh. Ne Necro's Death Prophet all this out. This is it. Wow, it just falls oh. so fast. They get the intel early this time, but they can't move fast enough. Just ridiculous. You don't want to relocate into that either. Death Prophet with a Yules, Ultimate Online, Necro units. That's a scary relocate. Now they'll come straight forward. Snake King, they break his armor. He throws out the shotgun, does a lot of damage to Snob, but not enough to bring him down. BKB gets popped. Will they press forward? Yeah, they sure will. Sna coming in. Ush taking a lot of damage. That'll be the end of his Aegis. Snake King just going hard right now. Death Prophet forced to Yules herself. Out comes the Wall of Replica. Vacuum back, but doesn't do a hell of a lot. Ush back up. This time pops his ultimate. IX Mike. He's on the run. Very low. That's a dead Whitebeard. And a dead IX Mike as well. Dead Death Prophet. This is just a cleanup. The Sneaky Nick's Assassins. Nothing sneaky about it. They're just getting scraped. That was definitely not sneaky. I don't know what that was. That was awful. Yep. Oh, like, and he tries to TP out, but he gets interrupted. That'll be a four for nil. Triple kill coming out for the king. Oh, boy. They just ran at them. Like, they, they all their necros were on cooldown. Death Prophet all was running out. They just they just went in. Yeah. You could tell that DP hesitated a little bit, and even now, Fluff, this will be a full team wipe. Korok going forward. He has the Scythe of Ice. That is one dead Fluff and stuff. Wow. Outplayed. Ownage is right, yeah. This is looking like game one. Might go the way of the rejects. That was definitely a deciding fight. That was their timing yeah. with the HGs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Lycan right now, PPD? Is this is this the the, the decline of Lycan? He seems pretty lackluster recently, even on Dire. Uh, I don't know. I still think he's very good. Uh -oh. Just got a... Whitebeard. Oh, Brax misses the hook shot, but... The problem with their lineup is, is that their only strategy is to hit buildings, and they have no. I mean, they needed that. The Knicks got the blink, and then maybe they could do some stuff, but they have no lockdown other than that. Like, Death Prophet doesn't offer anything. Dark Seers, I mean, that doesn't really offer that much lockdown. Shen definitely doesn't offer any. Mm -hmm. So, like, 
Blyken with Necros is good for the push, but they missed their timings and misplayed on those pushes. Yeah. They'll try and press out of the base here, but they won't be able to find any recovery kills. And Nara could actually just reinitiate here and try and make something happen. They are a little bit low on mana. Clockwork still doesn't have his hook shot. He does have 3,700 gold, though. Everyone is just darn rich on the Radiant side at this point. Yeah, they won that team fight and got a Rax, some buildings. They're swimming in the money. Oh, yeah. Looks like this could be the one final push from the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Five man, de Death Ball. De yeah, yeah, desperation push. Yeah, yeah, Alright, guys, they're coming mid. Everybody watch out. Clockwork <laughs> rocket. rocket. Right over. <laughs> Scouts it out. Yeah, they see it coming. One, four, three, seven. Softens them up a little bit. Hits four good, of them with an illuminate. Jesus. At least, at least you have an agenda. You're like, all right, guys, if we lose this fight, we'll just go next game. Yeah, no biggie. It's true. And wow, the Morphling and Puck. Neither of them have been killed a single time this game. I mean, Morphling's just gonna get another Rax. So. Yeah, Snake King. He's killing the tier three tower. There's no cliff available. It's down. They may get this tier two, but at the cost of the bottom lane of Rax, not a good trade, fellas. Man, yeah, what's the Rax, dude? Like, just go for Throne. Yep, yeah, they're going for it. They have no other option. They're all in here. Ush taking heavy damage, pops his BKB, still no shapeshift. Exorcism doing some pretty serious work here. Bottom lane of Rax have fallen. Now the Morphling has come back to join the party. Everyone on Snod is getting poked down. There's your all heal from Chen, but Ush, he's just so darn weak. He's forced to go wolf form and then just retreat. He got sent back. He's going to box back in here in a second, but I don't think they have enough. Nah, Nyx Assassin gets killed. Let's Ike's Mike has a nasty wall. Oh, mana leaked. Uh -oh. oh, Coddle's, Coddle's so good against Darkseer. Say goodbye he, to your mana. He needs a BKB, but he was going for it, but just no farm. Yeah. Snake King now 10, 0, and 5. They'll relocate up top. Tier 3 tower falls. That will be Mega Creeps. And, well, for the sneaky Nyx Assassins, I think it may be just about time to consider tapping out. Wall from IX Mike. All he makes is a Wisp Illusion, and it's not too scary. More thing, just eight Lycan's launch. <laughs> yeah. All right, G there's your GG. I think it's a more appropriate analogy is he pulled out the shotgun, killed Lycan, and then made him for lunch. Yeah, that works too, I guess. <laughs> Stealing the sandwich is way too Yogi Bear style. But wow. Pretty impressive from the North American rechecks. Like you mentioned, the Sneaky Nyx Assassins, they just missed their timing. They, they couldn't knock down the towers and... I don't know, just too much. They couldn't pressure the Puck or the Morphling. Both of them had a perfect game, not a single death across the two of them. Yeah, they played well. Overall, I think it was a really good game. Like, it was very close. And yep. uh, it's a good game one to get this series started. Yeah, for sure. Now, this is a best of five, so of course, uh, there will be plenty more Dota coming your way, guys. Potential of four games, but... You never know. Could be a 3-0 sweep for the Rejects. A lot on the line here. The loser of this series goes home empty-handed, and the winner will be joining Evil Geniuses as the second American team uh, for the Summit Land Finals here in Los Angeles. We'll take a short break. Come back for Game 2. I'm Zayori Solo in the studio. I've got PPD from EG joining me remotely, and we'll be right back after just a moment.